Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year, my name is Neo. In this video, we're gonna be working on this set. It is a fun, jelly-like, soft pink set with Old English glitter letters and bling and some cut French with glitter. It's, it's a lot going on. Um, so this client actually came in. I will link um, the video to this set that I'm taking off in the cards um, so that you can check it out. It was a Christmas set. It was really pretty and pink. And then she came back and was like, I want a little bit more pink. I'm not done with the color and I want my birthday set. So first thing I'm doing is showing you how I remove um, a previous set. So you can see there's a little bit of growth. She had that set for about two and a half to three weeks. And I've got my Young Nails Dust Collector on and below. And I'm using a Panna 3 times Core Safety Bit. So it does have really sharp flutes. It can be used in either direction. And I believe I have my um, Melody Susie Scamander Drill set at about 13 to 14,000 RPM. Um, and I am just shaving down to that clear acrylic layer that I do lay on clients. Um, when I know that there's someone who comes back a lot, um, especially for backfills and they get completely different designs, I always um, refill or backfill, infill, whatever you call it, with a layer of clear acrylic so that I know that when I'm removing designs, once I hit that clear, the natural nail is safe and I can just um, start on that base. So I'm filing down um, every design and I'm just going to go down to that clear layer. You're going to see the color kind of dissipate and I'm going to try my best to be careful. I do think that I messed up this finger. Um, I mentioned it in a previous video that when I do um, remove designs, sometimes around the tip area, I do get a little bit heavy handed and can compromise the integrity of the tip. As you can see, it just kind of snapped. I went a little too um, hard. So all that I do is just file down as much as I can to the natural nail. So when this happens, I'm using extremely, extremely light pressure because the bit is very coarse and the speed is fairly high um, so I break I get it down as much as possible I'm actually gonna go in with a sanding band afterwards to file off as much excess of that clear acrylic layer and then add a new tip shape file and then get it ready um, just as I'm gonna prep the rest of the nails so yeah I feel like um, this young nails dust collector is really good I will say because it doesn't have any variation in the amount of speed or suction that you're wanting, um, I do feel like the McCart Dust Collector collected more, I guess, because yesterday I was using it on a client and I had dust all over myself and I was just kind of like, uh, this is a little bit annoying. Um, it's really good. It's low profile in terms of height. Um, it's easier to clean up, but I just wish it had just a tiny bit more suction. Um, it gets the larger pieces very fine, but as you can see on my hand, it's like, there's a bit there. Um, but yeah, I'm just going in and I'm gonna remove all of the previous design. So in this clip right now, I am um, going in with my Young Nails Core Clear layer. I did go ahead and push her cuticles back. So after, I don't have the footage because we were out of frame the entire time and I was like, whoops. Um, so I, after I file off the previous design, I go in with a cuticle pusher, I push back the cuticles, I use a needle bit um, 
diamond bit um, to clear underneath that skin to scrape up any cuticle and then I use a sanding band to kind of smooth out the area and get rid of any additional cuticle area then I prepped with the Mia secret dehydrator and primer and then a, a thin coat of the young nails protein bond primer so now I'm just doing that back fill as you can see it goes by very very quickly I just add a tiny bead to the back part of the natural part of the nail that grew out and then swipe it down and it just kind of builds that nice layer of clear so that when she comes back in another two to three weeks then I can just do the same exact process and then redo my design on top of this so I just think it's helpful um, for me it's a good visualizer when filing off designs and this is basically what we're looking like after a nice thin coat of clear acrylic that we can just build on so this set she really really wanted to use the young nails core French pink um, because it's like a nice very very sheer kind of jelly pink kind of color um, the only thing is that it is so sheer that it was not going to cover her nail plate like her natural nail bed her free edge and she didn't like the look of that so on two of the nails I am actually going to be doing an ombre with these two very sheer colors so that's the color of the French pink by young nails as you can see it is very very sheer basically it's like a, a clear with a hint of pink in it um, it's very pretty so to cover her nails, I'm going in with iGel Beauty's Dark Pink. So it's a very similar color. It just has a tiny, tiny bit more pigment in it. Um, and it's very subtle. And what it does is it helps to cover her natural nail just a little bit, but we still get that clear, soft pink jelly look. So I'm gonna do that on the ring finger and on the middle finger. So that was the um, Young Nails Core French Pink. And then I'm gonna go in at the back of the nail with the iGel Beauty dark pink color. And as you can see, that iGel Beauty dark pink color just helped to cover up the natural nail, but it still has that soft pink kind of color. And I'm just going to be filling in the back part of her nail. The rest of the nails are all going to be this darker pink color. So the only two nails that have the core French pink by Young Nails on the tips are the ring finger and the middle finger. And then I'm gonna be doing full nails of the um, darker pink color from iGel Beauty.
So this color is really pretty. I have another client who loves this iGel Beauty Dark Pink color. It is really, really cute. It's a very soft pink. As you can see, it has just enough coverage to cover the nail bed, but it is extremely, extremely sheer of a color. Interesting that it's called dark pink because it's not dark at all or has like a ton of pigment, but it's a really pretty soft color, as you can see. So I'm just gonna be adding that to the rest of the nails, her pointer, her pinky, and her thumb. So at this point, I'm just waiting for it to polymerize a little bit. We are gonna be doing cut French on all of the other fingers. So I'm going to take my extendo tip. I use this all the time to do French cuts. And I'm going to slice a diagonal in that nail and scrape off as much as possible. I'm going to let it dry because we're gonna go in and actually file to make sure that it's really crisp. And I'm just gonna repeat that on the other nail. So I'm gonna do a full nail of the dark pink with the eye gel beauty. And then I'm gonna wait for it to polymerize just a little bit. I think I waited a little long on one of the fingers and it was a little bit difficult, but I made it work. Um, and then I'm going to use my extendo tip. You can use an X-Acto blade. I see people use those metal um, French cutter pieces. Um, I've seen people use like floss. Just use whatever works for you. Um, the X-Acto knife is cool. The extendo tips are just around all the time, so I just use those. Um, and then I'm going to just roll it in that line. I'm not sliding it. I'm just rolling the length of that tip around the nail. And then I'm going to slide off excess product um, away from what I don't want. So on this nail, I let it polymerize just a little too long. As you can see, I'm like going in and having to actually pull off the product, but that's fine. I'm just gonna clean it up with the nail file later. And then we're gonna do the same process on the pointer finger. Just using that extendo tip to kind of carve as much as possible away. I figured I wanted a little bit more um, of the pink cutaway. And as you can see, it's like hard. So I made it work. I just used my file to clean up the line. But yeah, another solid nail of pink, this cover, it's not a cover pink, but this pink is so pretty. It covers just enough of the nail bed and is sheer and soft. It's just a really good color. I suggest you, if you are interested in Ijo Beauty Dip and Dap powders, that dark pink is one that you, you have your hands on because you can go pretty much anywhere with this kind of color. You can go a little bit more graphic, you can go dark, you can ombre with it. It has enough coverage that you can ombre onto a darker tip color. I've done that with this color as well. It's just a really pretty pink. So now I'm gonna go in with my hand file and I am going to be 
cleaning up the nails. So I'm using the, the nail file. I'm using a 100-180 grit hand file. And I'm, as you can see, I'm smoothing out the surface of the nail just in case I waited a little too long and there was acrylic left over on the nail. And then I'm going to put it in the groove of that cut that we made, that diagonal cut, and clean up that, that line so we get a sharp line as well. So as you can see, I'm putting the file right along that diagonal and I'm cleaning it up. I'm also cleaning the sidewalls and the tip of the nail because when I'm sliding off that acrylic, sometimes bits of it get lodged on the edge of the nail and kind of mess up the shape. But as you can see, it looks pretty good. So to get rid of any dust um, that might contaminate my design, I'm spraying her hands down with Young Nail Swipe. I just keep it in a spray bottle and I'm using a manicure brush to kind of clean off any dust. So now I'm going in with the Young Nails Synergy Gel. This is a whole Young Nail set. This is the gel that I got in that mystery box haul. Um, I will link that video in the cards as well. And I thought it was going to be more of a poly gel consistency, but it's more of a builder gel, a little bit more on the runny side than a poly gel. And I realized I don't need to use this poly gel brush because it comes with that pointy applicator. Um, so I'm just using the squeezy tube to kind of get a good coating of this holographic silver glitter on the French areas of the nail. You can kind of push around the product um, until you get the coverage that you're wanting. I'm not building it up particularly high because we are gonna clear cap these nails with more acrylic, but I am just making sure to push the product where it needs to be so that we get full coverage. You don't want any gaps um, in the, the nail just because um, the tip might have scratched a certain area. So I'm gonna be adding this Synergy Gel to every single one of the nails that have the French cut. And that's pretty much what it's looking like. Just nice and pretty. Nice in that, that French cut that we made. So I'm just gonna be applying it the same way, just kind of dabbing and sliding the product around. It's really easy to use. It's not extremely runny. Um, and yeah, the, the squeezy tube is very easy and simple to use. Just kind of squeeze and mash the product around. Um, I saw people get some different types of colors. At first I was like annoyed, kind of, um, that I got a holographic silver. I was just thinking like, when am I ever gonna use this? But funny enough, this client was like, do you have glitter that looks like this? And I was like, you see, the universe works its way for a reason. Cause I was thinking, um, I saw some people get like nude kind of color so they can do like um, sets of like cover earth or cover taupe or you know cover pink things like that and I was just kind of like that, that would be cool to have um, that kind of nude color in the synergy gel but I guess it worked out that I got this holographic silver because right away someone was like can I have that silver so it worked out after applying I'm gonna have her cure in the lamp for a full 60 seconds to have this harden up and this is what that's looking like everything is nice and clean and because we went in with that um, e, I said e file, the hand file, and sharpened up that line, so long as you didn't go over that line with the synergy gel, the French cut is nice and clean. So now I'm going in with my Young Nails Core Clear, or I think this is actually Speed Clear. I'm using Speed Clear just because it was nearby, and I'm going to be clear capping the entire nails.
after clear capping, I'm going in with my 80-80 pan file. I'm going to be cleaning up the side walls, making sure that the tips are nice and crisp. And as you can see, there's a lot of dust on that dust collector. So that's all from her removal process of the previous hand, prepping those nails, hand filing now. Um, it, it does help. That's a lot of freaking dust to have like on your table. And as you can see, the dust collector, um, it keeps the dust pretty high. Unlike the McCart one, it's a slide in and out and that top grade is not removable. So it does carry that you know, film of dust perpetually. Um, so this one's pretty nice. I just wish that the, the suction could be a little bit higher, but um, yeah, I'm just going in and just cleaning up the shape with my 8080 and not doing too much because I'm gonna go in with my e-file, but just making sure that the shape is where we want it to be. So she enjoys a tapered square. I do too, it's my favorite. Um, so yeah, just going in and making sure that the shape is pretty good. After that, I'm going in with my extra fine 5-in-1 carbide bit. It is a safety at the top and I'm mostly smoothing out the nail and cleaning up her sidewalls and cuticle area. So sometimes I might get acrylic on the sidewalls. Um, um, before filing, you might see me push the skin away a little bit, but this just helps to make sure that I can get nice and tight up in there. You see I'm working on that cuticle area. And because it's a safety, I know that I'm not going to hurt the client. So I'm cleaning up the sidewall, smoothing out the nail. Sometimes you'll see me run my thumb down the length of the nail to see if I feel any lumps and bumps or grooves. Sometimes there's like a groove on the nail. So just go ahead and clean that up. And I'm using the very tip of that bit to kind of clean the cuticle area, just like that, and the sidewalls. And then to debulk in any way, like if I want to push the apex a little bit more forward instead of it being towards the cuticle of the nail, I'll spend a little bit more time shaving that um, back area of the nail. But that's basically what I'm doing here. I apologize for the light changing. I don't know what is happening. I think maybe my head gets in the way of the light and things go from like a blue toned light to like an orange toned, to toned light. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going back in with that 100, 180 grit hand file and I'm just cleaning up the shape. As you can see, it's pretty smooth and sharp. Just making sure that it stays that way. Um, you want, you know, a nice and tight shape. So that's what I'm doing after e-filing. Then I'm gonna go in with my, um, fine buffing block and just smooth up the surface of the nail and also try to get the edges of that buffing block in the cuticles and the sidewall so that we can flake away any excess product and I like to run it on the bottom as well sometimes um, there might be flakes of acrylic on the bottom that bothers clients so sometimes you can get it if you use your buffer or a hand file underneath the nail just really fast you kind of lift up anything that you want so after having her clean her hands and I cleaned with lint free wipe and swipe to get rid of any possible dust i'm going in with a glossy top coat over all of the nails and i'm making sure to get underneath the nails as well because that pink is so sheer and we use the core french pink on the bottom some of them are basically see-through just like a hint of pink which is really pretty then i'm going to have her cure for 30 seconds 
And now to the fun stuff. So I am drawing a nine in old English letters. I actually had to pull this up on Google because I was like, I have no idea what this is supposed to look like. And I'm using an eye gel beauty paint, gel paint um, in the color silver. And she is having a birthday in this 2021. And it's actually, no, I think it's tomorrow. So happy birthday in advance to you. Um, and her birth year was 1998. So she wanted a nine and an eight in old English letters. And I said, you know, let's match that holographic silver that we used on your French cut. So I'm going in with a plain silver and a nice painter striping brush. And I'm just freehanding this nine in old English letters. If you're someone who struggles, just try and look at it as tiny little pieces. Like I didn't go in and think, okay, I have to draw a nine. I'm just like, okay, this looks like a rectangle here. This looks like a pointy part here. Angle it that way there. Now to match that glitter, I'm going in with a holographic glitter that I got from Michaels. I think this set is so freaking useful. It has pretty much every color glitter you can imagine. Then I have her cure that nine for 60 seconds in that gel lamp. So now on the other hand, we're doing the number eight. And as you can see, that jelly tip is very, very clear. So the dark pink barely covers the, um, the natural nail. You can kind of still see her nail plate in the free edge, but the dark pink is very pretty. And then the tip of the nail is even more clear. So that was the court French paint from Young Nails. So I'm doing the same thing with the silver gel paint from iGel Beauty. I'm going to draw the number eight as best I can um, from looking at the screen. I had a cell phone nearby and then I'm going to sprinkle that holographic silver glitter on top and then have her cure for another 60 seconds. And I find the best way to get rid of that extra extra or excess glitter, I can't speak, is to use a manicure brush. So I went in, that's what this is looking like, and it's a perfect match to that Synergy Gel glitter that we used on the other, um, the French cuts. So I'm doing the same thing with the number eight, and then I'll give you a shot of the nine and the eight together. And they just look really cool. I thought it was pretty, um, and she really enjoyed it. Now it is bling time. So I did not top coat this particular nail because we knew we were gonna add bling to it. Um, we're gonna end up adding a lot more bling to all of the nails, but at the time we just didn't know that we weren't, we were gonna add bling. But this nail in particular, I hadn't top coated because I knew I was gonna add bling. So this is the middle finger that also has the ombre from the dark pink to the poor French pink from Young Nails. I went in with the Two Guys Bling Gel. I'm adding my glossy top coat to the top and the bottom, and I'm not curing yet. So now I'm gonna be using Crystal AB rhinestones that I got from Amazon and silver, um, what are they called? Metal caviar beads to kind of just build a chunky design in the middle of the nail. So there's not much to talk about. I'm just gonna let you watch me figure this out.
And I love doing rhinestones in this method because as you can see, I'm making lots of small adjustments without having to worry about the adhesive drying on me. Um, I think there's times when using a drying adhesive is beneficial, but for the most part, for things like this, I really do like using the bling gel just because it gives me time and it allows me to make small adjustments. Like if I don't feel like something is clear or not clear, but if straight or if you know the client doesn't like it, the worst thing you can do is just wipe it off and start again and it won't compromise the shape or anything on the nail. So I actually had her go in and cure that for 60 seconds and then she decided she wanted bling on the rest of the fingers as well. So I went in with my two guys bling gel. I'm adding a layer of top coat again and then we're just going to be doing some cuticle work around here. Just, so just some small rhinestones around the pinky area closer to the cuticle. I didn't want to compromise that French cut that we did earlier. And then I'm going to have her cure for 60 seconds. Then we're going to do some bling on the pointer finger and then we did some more bling on the thumb. So it's just, it, it, it got bling heavy, but you know, it came out great. This is the final nail. We're just going to be doing some cuticle bling on the cuff here of the thumb. I'm so excited for 2021. I'm really proud of the progress that I've made on this channel. I'm so glad for everyone who has subscribed so early on. It's exciting to see and I have lots of ideas. I'm still building my clientele so I'm learning so much and having just a blast doing nails. And yeah, I just hope you, you know, enjoy what I'm putting out for you. Like if you like, subscribe for more. I do have that action shot coming for you for these nails. Happy New Year to everybody and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.